The last crewed test flight of Starliner was supposed to be Boeing's comeback story, the long-awaited crew flight test that would finally prove Starliner was ready to carry humans to space. But within hours of launch, the mission began to unravel. Thrusters failed, helium leaked, and the astronauts on board quietly faced a situation no one had fully prepared for. What they just revealed about that flight paints a disturbing picture of how close it came to disaster and why they never came home on the spacecraft they launched in. Astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams were on board. Both are veteran NASA astronauts, trained for every possible scenario. But what they encountered on this flight went far beyond standard simulations. Multiple thrusters on Starliner's service module began to fail during its approach to the International Space Station. Helium leaks were also detected, five separate ones. The astronauts reported these problems to mission control, and a tense period of analysis began. Initially, the mission was scheduled to last only 8 to 10 days, but as NASA and Boeing engineers worked through the issues, the mission timeline kept stretching. While docked to the ISS, teams on the ground ran in-space hot-fire tests of the thrusters to gather more data. Despite the astronauts' reports and these real-time evaluations, the reliability of Starliner's propulsion system remained unclear. And that presented a dangerous problem because the same propulsion system was needed to bring the crew back home. On August 24, 2024, NASA made a dramatic and difficult decision. Starliner would return to Earth without its crew. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson made the announcement publicly. He said the decision was made because safety is NASA's core value. Although simulations suggested a crewed return might be possible, there was not enough expert consensus to justify the risk. The propulsion system couldn't be trusted in its current state, and that was unacceptable under NASA's human spaceflight standards. This meant that Wilmore and Williams, the astronauts who had trained for years to fly Starliner, would not return on the vehicle they launched in. Instead, NASA would assign them seats on SpaceX's Crew-9 Dragon capsule. It was a remarkable and humbling turn of events, not just for Boeing, but for NASA's entire commercial crew strategy. Integrating the Starliner astronauts into Crew-9 wasn't simple. It required reconfiguring the Dragon capsule to accommodate extra crew and cargo. The delay in preparing the new launch pushed their return from early 2025 into March or April. In the end, the astronauts spent over nine months in space, far longer than planned. One of the major reasons NASA didn't bring the astronauts back on Starliner was the need to collect critical data from the service module. That module contains the thrusters and systems that had malfunctioned, but it burns up during re-entry. Keeping the spacecraft in orbit allowed more time to gather diagnostic information, run additional tests, and understand what had gone wrong. Even with these precautions, there was significant disagreement between Boeing and NASA engineers behind the scenes. Some believed that Starliner could bring the crew home safely. Others insisted the margin for error was too narrow. According to internal reports, there was real tension in the room when the final decision was made to abandon the crewed return. After Starliner landed uncrewed in New Mexico in September 2024, a detailed joint investigation began. By early 2025, NASA and Boeing had closed out over 70% of the in-flight anomalies. But the two most critical issues, the thruster failures and helium leaks, remained open. These weren't minor bugs. They were fundamental failures that could have risked lives. To understand the problems, NASA and Boeing began extensive ground testing at White Sands Test Facility. One of the key goals was to replicate the thermal environment inside the service module. Engineers built a full-scale test rig called a doghouse to fire the same type of thrusters under different conditions. The hope was to validate new thermal models and understand how heat affected the seals and plumbing. Preliminary findings pointed to heat-induced damage. Thermal stress on seals appeared to be causing helium leaks, while certain firing profiles were leading to thruster overheating. Engineers proposed several fixes, including modifying pulse profiles, adding thermal barriers, and testing new types of seals. Despite all these challenges, Boeing reaffirmed its commitment to the Starliner program. NASA, too, voiced support. 
Steve Stee, manager of the Commercial Crew Program, stated that NASA still intended for Starliner to become an operational part of the agency's launch strategy. But the reality was more complicated. Using a SpaceX vehicle to bring back Boeing's astronauts exposed a fundamental truth. NASA's two-provider strategy exists precisely for this kind of failure. When one spacecraft can't safely fly, the other provides backup. This time, it was SpaceX that saved the mission. Looking back at the Starliner program, the problems appear systemic. Starliner has faced years of setbacks. Its first uncrewed flight in 2019 failed to reach the ISS because of software issues. A second test in 2022 succeeded, but revealed thruster malfunctions and valve corrosion. Before the 2024 crewed test flight, further issues like flammable tape and parachute concerns delayed the mission. Even the Atlas V rocket meant to launch Starliner experienced valve issues that forced last-minute scrubs. These repeated issues have cost Boeing over $2 billion in losses. That's partly because of the fixed-price contract structure Boeing signed with NASA. Unlike older cost-plus contracts, a fixed-price deal puts all financial risk on the contractor. For Boeing, that meant absorbing the cost of every delay, redesign, and retest. And with a contract worth $4.2 billion, more than SpaceX received, it's striking how far behind Boeing has fallen. SpaceX started flying astronauts in 2020. It has now completed multiple routine crew rotation missions. Boeing, meanwhile, is still struggling to certify Starliner for operational use. Some analysts say the root cause may lie in Boeing's corporate culture. After its merger with McDonnell Douglas, Boeing's focus shifted more toward financial performance and shareholder value. That shift may have come at the expense of engineering excellence. Independent reviews have identified weaknesses in Boeing's systems integration processes and a lack of robust testing procedures. This problem isn't isolated to Starliner. Boeing's commercial aircraft division has faced its own crises, including issues with the 737 MAX and 787 Dreamliner. All of this fuels a growing perception that Boeing's technical rigor is slipping. Now, as of mid-2025, Boeing and NASA are still working to close the major propulsion system issues. The next Starliner flight is penciled in for late 2025 or early 2026, but whether that mission will carry crew or cargo hasn't been decided. Much depends on the outcome of the ongoing investigations and ground tests. There is also the looming deadline of 2030, the planned retirement date of the International Space Station. If Starliner isn't certified soon, its operational lifespan could be extremely limited. With each delay, the financial pressure grows, and the opportunity to make Starliner a reliable crew vehicle shrinks. NASA says it remains committed to having two providers. But in practice, Starliner's repeated delays and ongoing technical concerns may lead NASA to rely more heavily on SpaceX going forward. The astronauts' return on a Dragon capsule might not just be a temporary workaround. It could be a glimpse into the future of NASA's crew transportation strategy. For now, Boeing faces a crucial test. Can it fix Starliner's remaining issues, earn NASA certification, and launch regular crew missions in time to make a difference? Or will the program's problems continue to overshadow its promise? Wilmore and Williams, through their professionalism and silence, told the story better than any press release. Their unplanned, prolonged mission and their quiet return on a competitor's spacecraft revealed more than any headline could. Starliner was supposed to mark Boeing's return to greatness in spaceflight. Instead, it exposed how far the company still has to go. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.